Hello everyone. Today we'll be learning about tyrosine metabolism. So tyrosine is an amino acid uh, primarily, but it's also a hormone precursor, neurotransmitter precursor, and energy precursor. So where does this really important amino acid come from? Well, it's formed from the hydroxylation of another amino acid, phenylalanine, in the liver. As I mentioned, tyrosine is a precursor for the neurotransmitters dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine, as well as tyramine, which is a vasoactive amino acid, and several hormones, including thyroxine and epinephrine. Tyrosine can be catabolized into two four carbon compounds, fumarate and acetoacetate. And these enter the Krebs cycle or the TCA cycle. So it's a remarkable coincidence that most tyrosine metabolites have some connection to the number four. It's also convenient that the T in tyrosine has four points here, as we can see, which link it to the number four. So now we're going to walk through this mnemonic. So again, the tyrosine T, here it is. We're going to start off by drawing a literal T. Go. And this T, you can see it's a little lopsided, you know, but that's okay. The branches, you can see there's two kind of short arms here, two longer arms. Each of these longer arms is going to be divided into four different boxes. So as you're watching this video, feel free to also draw along. Remember, all of these are going to have some connection to the number four. So because this is the tyrosine T, it makes sense that we're going to put the amino acid tyrosine right here in the center of the tyrosine T. As I mentioned in the last slide, phenylalanine gets converted into tyrosine by the enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase, or PAH. And this is the enzyme that is defective in the disorder PKU. Tyrosine then can undergo one of several pathways. We're going to start from up here and then go clockwise around. So the first product that tyrosine can be converted into is what's called T4 or thyroxine, and this occurs in the thyroid. This is via an enzyme called TPO, thyroid peroxidase. Notice all the T's in this reaction here, thyroid T4, TPO, tyrosine. That'll help you remember that. Next, let's turn our attention to this arm here. So the end product of this pathway here is going to be neurotransmitters and also hormones, which are going to happen in the brain and also in the adrenals, adrenal glands. So this pathway also has a lot of hydroxylation reactions. And the end effect of this is to make these molecules more water soluble. Phenylalanine, phenyl, meaning it has a phenyl group, is not very water soluble. But by the time we get to norepinephrine and epinephrine, which are at the end of this pathway, we'll have a pretty water soluble compound. So, as I said, we're actually, and we're actually going to have three different hydroxylation steps in this pathway. 
So unsurprisingly, the first step in tyrosine going down this pathway is a it's catalyzed by a hydroxylase, so tyrosine hydroxylase, which is converted into a molecule called DOPA, or a dihydroxyphenylalanine. We're just adding a hydroxy group. We have zero, one, now two hydroxy groups. DOPA itself can be converted into two different molecules. So first it can be converted, interestingly, into melanin. And this is by which enzyme? That's right, tyrosinase. Tyrosinase, we're just going to call it, leave it with a T here. DOPA can also be converted into what other substrate? That's right, DOPA mean. So how do we get from DOPA to dopamine? So one way to remember this is these are both D's. So whatever's in here must be a, a D as well. And that in fact is the case. We have a D carboxylase, DOPA D carboxylase. The other way to think about this is you have tyrosine is an amino acid, right? So you have an amino group and you have an acid group. Literally, what we're doing here, the molecule here is literally called dopamine. Dopamine. So it literally has an amino acid group. I don't see any acid here, right? Remember, the acid here is carboxylic, is actually carboxylic acid. You know, I don't see an, uh, the name acid in dopamine, so we must have removed the carboxylic acid. So dopa decarboxylase removes the carboxylic acid part from dopa, generating dopamine. So we're left only with the amine part. That makes sense, right? Okay. Next step, dopamine is going to be converted into nor epi. Convenient, right? The N has four points. Remember, we're looking for the fours again. D is the fourth letter of the alphabet. So we're going, we're going good. This is, this is pretty simple so far, actually. And the, the, sort, the enzyme that's going to catalyze dopamine into norepinephrine is, you guessed it, another hydroxylase. So it's going to be dopamine hydroxylase. Right? Remember, we have this is all about hydroxylation. This pathway is all about hydroxylation. The last step is going to take norepinephrine into epinephrine. And this is actually going to be a methylation reaction. So you may have heard of the enzyme PNMT, phenylethanolamine N-methyltransferase, converts norepinephrine into epinephrine. And that's the end of the pathway. That's all you need to know for this pathway. All right, so tyrosine. It can also be converted, before we go into this arm, into something called tyramine. Sounds pretty similar to tyrosine, just tyramine. Again, the same principle applies. We have the word amine literally in the word, right? We're taking an amino acid, we're converting it into some other molecule that has the word amine in it. So that must mean we, that we removed the acid part, the carboxylic acid. So this is tyrosine decarboxylase, TBC.
just like we did here from dopa to dopamine, it's the same idea going from tyrosine to tyramine. We're just taking off that carboxylic acid group. That's all we're doing. All right. So these steps up until this point have been generating biologically important molecules that are either hormones or important for signaling. Now we're going to look at the catabolic pathway where we go from an amino acid into energy substrates. Remember, that's the other pathway that these that tyrosine can go down. Right? So these are going to be entering the Krebs cycle. Again, we're going to have connections with the number four. So the first reaction here is tyrosine converting into 4-hydroxy-phenylpyruvate. So I want to just draw a little support bar here, you know, because this T is a little lopsided. And this will help you remember that the phenyl part is basically repeated here in 4 hydroxy pyruvate, it's literally just a 4 hydroxy phenyl group attached to a pyruvate molecule. That's where the name comes from. And the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is a transaminase, tyrosine transaminase. And importantly, transaminases are almost always the first step when a amino acid gets converted into, begins the process of being converted into citric acid intermediates or energy substrates, if you will. All right. Next, we're going from 4 hydroxy phenylpyruvate to another molecule called homogentisate. The H, uppercase H, has four little points on it. Again, our connection with the number four, homogentisate. So the homo part here actually really helps us out because just like we have a four on this side of the reaction, we're also going to have a four down here as well. And just like this, molecule, this reaction is converted by a di oxygenase, specifically 4-hydroxyphenylpyruvate dioxygenase. This reaction is also going to be catalyzed by a dioxygenase. So HOMO reflects the HOMO means similar, right, or, the, or it means the same. So you're going to have the same enzyme on either side of the homogentisate as well as the same starting number on both sides of the homogentisate. Now this molecule here is 4-MAA, 4-molyl acetoacetate. And this molecule gets isomerized into FAA, or fumaryl acetoacetate. So again, we have the same endings here, acetoacetate, acetoacetate. And the only difference, this, these are basically the same molecule. It just undergoes an isomerization by an isomerase, which flips 4-MAA into FAA. And again, 4, the number 4, if you spell it out, F-O-U-R, F in 4 goes with F and FAA. Now, this is a 8-carbon compound that's actually broken down into two different 4-carbon compounds. How convenient is that? That's really convenient, actually. Fumarate and acetoacetate. The, product, the upstream product here 
FAA fumaryl acetoacetate literally contains the names of the two products, fumarate and acetoacetate. It could not get any easier than that, guys. Okay. And this reaction, I mentioned it's a hydrolysis reaction. It's catalyzed by fumaryl acetoacetate hydrolase, right? It's chopped in half and to generate two four carbon compounds which then enter the TCA, or the, aka the citric acid cycle. And these go on to make, of course, ATP. I want to point out some important additional products here in this pathway. So 4-MAA and FAA can each be converted into a product called succinyl acetoacetate which can be, then be converted into succinyl acetone and this is a really important compound because it can actually cause liver cancer liver cancer and how would you get buildup of these of this product here. Well, what if you had a mutation in the enzyme FAH? Exactly. Well, that's what happens in the disorder tyrosinemia type 1. And in fact, if we go up along this pathway, we have different metabolic disorders. So homogentisate dioxygenase re mutations result in alkaptonuria, AK. 4-hydroxypenylpyruvate dioxygenase mutations result in tyrosinemia type 3. And this enzyme is also inhibited by the drug nitisinone, which is actually used to treat tyrosinemia type 1. And if we have a malfunction of the enzyme tyrosine transaminase, this is actually tyrosinemia type 2. Okay, so that was the tyrosine mnemonic, the tyrosine T. I really hope you enjoyed. I hope that made things simple for you. If you found this video useful, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. I'm trying to grow the channel, so please subscribe. And you can support more videos like this one by joining my Patreon. Thanks.